Hi all, Denise here. I'm giving you a peek in my studio today. Um, actually, this was my studio for the last week or so. And uh, I'm obviously doing a voiceover so I can walk you through some of the steps that I went through on this painting. This is actually in two sections. Uh, it is a 48 wide by 68 inch long canvas when you put the two together. And this will be going into the five art studio and gallery entrance. And in that entrance, each of the five artists, we hang a piece uh, that represents our artwork right at our entrance. And we try to keep a little bit of yellow in them because the decor in our entrance is yellow. The, uh, our brand is, has yellow in it. And we all work in the same size. And so it makes, it makes a really nice entrance to have five big paintings as you walk in. Now, yellow, not one of my strong colors that I use a lot. Um, bits and pieces here and there are fine. So I went over my canvases and just scrubbed in some colors, brushed on some colors, some variations of yellow, and a little bit of, of a light gray in there. Um, and my thinking was that I could come back over and cover most of it and just have a little bit of yellow peek through. But as you'll see as we go on, that's not quite how it ended up. I kind of became friends with yellow. So here, once I got my, my background on, um, I started laying papers. And I don't really have a plan when I'm laying papers. In, in this uh, piece right here, I stuck to black and white and neutral. I didn't want to get a lot of color going on underneath because actually I wasn't sure what I was doing yet. I had no plan other than yellow and get some neutral papers on. So I use a polyurethane right from Home Depot uh, as my glue and as my medium to lay my papers down. It's also the medium I use all the way through and to top coat my piece and seal it. So um, I'm just, you know, just laying papers down. Now, while I've got this going on, um, as long as I've got one piece, I always work in a series. And if I have one piece going, I'll have two, three, four pieces. In this case, I have five pieces going because I also had four 24 by 24 inch cradle boards made for me. And it was a perfect time to get to work on those too. So as you can see, there's one here to my right, and it has the variations of the yellows and the, the light grays in them as well. And um, once I get the papers laid down, while that's all drying and setting up, I can jump over and work on the other canvases. So here we go. I'm going to line up these canvases and um, of course I'm not working as fast as what you see here in the time lapse, but I am, I am going pretty quickly and laying my papers down. And as I said, I have papers stacked up in the, on the table behind me, just black and white and, and the neutrals and every, every once in a while I'll pop in a little color like that bright pink is the inside of an envelope. Uh, with a window on it, and I thought, okay, that's just too good not to add in. So um, I use papers that uh, the black and white circles up on the top, those are papers that I make myself. Now some things I can't make myself, um, the, the dress pattern papers, can't make those. Um, I try not to use uh, to papers of that other people have made with their art. I will do, for instance, in this piece right here, um, that's just a piece of paper that I wrote and wrote and wrote on, and then I make lots of copies of it so I have my own paper to tear up to add into my pieces. 
sometimes book pages, vintage book pages, and once I add them on, it's amazing when you start doing your painting, the words that pop out at you that, that you hadn't planned just show up. And working on a cradle board while we're watching this is uh, really pretty wonderful, and you'll see why a little bit um, later down the line. They give you the ability to really scrub and scratch and sand and be a little bit tougher than you would be with a canvas. So um, I love working on cradle board. Love, love, love it. Sometimes these papers end up uh, showing up and helping uh, create the, the piece that, that I'm making. Um, other times they get covered over, and that is always the toughest thing for any artist, any mixed media artist to do, is you have something down that you love, 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 and um, it's just not working. It's just not working for you, so you have to cover it up. But other times, pieces will uh, that you just laid in with no apparent reason will end up being um, the instigator of a, of a piece. They'll end up being, in this case, maybe a, flower, a vase for flowers or a, a tabletop or a flower itself. So um, you know, I'm never quite sure how they're going to show up for me. I do, when I'm laying things out instinctually, um, I will lay things out either in some form of the rule of thirds, uh, just because I have that in my head, and, and it's real easy to do without even thinking about it. Um, that piece that I'm that I'm adding on right now is a copy of a letter that I wrote, sent to my grandmother with stamps when I was a kid, little kid. And uh, I love that letter, so I've made many copies of it, and um, I use it quite a bit in my in pieces. It just makes me really happy. So that's another thing that's really fun. If you can make your own things and tie things in that are personal to you, it makes your artwork even better. So here we are. This one, once I got the papers on, I started to scribble and write. And then the rest of these uh, photos, um, I'm sorry that once I get into a painting, it's hard to remember to stop and take a picture. So um, what you're gonna see now are still shots. This was once I got everything laid out and kind of found my design and drew it in. Once I've gotten that done, I can go in and start adding colors. Um, I will do several different layers of my background colors because I like the, the buildup of the layers. And I also gives me the opportunity, I kind of know what my subject matter is going to be. So it lets me play with the background a little bit and decide, do I want to go light or do I want to go dark or do I want to add more color? So that's what I'm doing here. And I did decide I didn't want to go light. I wanted to keep more color in the piece. It added more contrast. And uh, so that's what I did. So this is going in and refining, uh, refining my, the items in my painting. So now, here you go. Here is uh, pretty much, I have everything laid out. I don't have everything detailed out yet. Um, I've just, some of the papers you might recognize from when I first started laying them out, they, they do, um, some of them do get to stick around and be seen, but Mostly, um, I will go in, uh, once I have my papers, I add paint to them, I add oil pastels, um, my Stabilo pencil, and along with that piece, here are a couple of the 24 by 24s. These were papers laid in, and I went around them with black and really loved the graphic design of these. 
And while this one also had a black background, I wasn't happy with it. So I sanded and scrubbed it and abstracted it up. And I really love how this one turned out. So here's the finished piece. Um, you can see all the papers and all of the marks that I made in this one. And here it is hanging in our five art gallery and studio in Liberty Station, San Diego. And uh, as you can see, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy it got done. I love how it turned out. And I love discovering yellow as my new friend. So thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up on your way out and I will see you in the next video.